Shalom friends and Chag Shavuot Sameach. I'm so glad to be here with you today. Today we're going to look at a very important topic in relation with Shavuot and it has to do with focusing on properly not only gathering the bride but also dressing the bride as they go hand in hand. Every morning during our morning prayers, our Shachari prayers, there is a prayer that says that there are certain things that a man enjoys his fruits of in this world. However, this principle remains for him in the world to come. And so in the prayer store, we'll look at these 10 things. And it says, honoring your father and mother, acts of kindness, arriving early at the house of study, morning and evening, hospitality to strangers, visiting the sick, gathering the bride, attending to the, de to the dead, devotion and prayer, and bringing peace between people and the study of Torah as equivalent to them all. Notice one of those 10 things, the 10 principles that we read every morning that one enjoys their fruits in this world and the world to come is Hachnasat Kala, the gathering of the bride. However, we have to understand that this gathering is not just gathering, it is also understood as dressing the bride. We cannot gather a naked bride. The bride must be dressed in the proper garments, with her, which are none other than the fine white linen, as we are going to see. And so, in the scripture, what does this gathering actually look like? Well, the Torah gives us a very good perspective of this. In the book of Exodus, chapter 18. Now, in the book of Exodus, chapter 18, this is two chapters before Shavuot actually occurs. Shavuot happens in Exodus chapter 20 at Mount Sinai. But we see in Exodus chapter 18 that Moses has been separated from his bride. Moses is representing the, the Messiah. Zipporah is representing the bride of Messiah. And when Moses went back into Egypt and all of the plagues came about in Egypt, Moses and Aaron actually sent Zipporah back with her father. So since this time, the whole time, they've been separated. And so what happens is Zipporah gets escorted to her groom, to Moses, by her father Jethro. And so we're going to look at Exodus 18 verse 2 and we're going to look deeper as to why did Jethro have to escort the bride? Why could Zipporah not just come to her husband on her own? She had to be escorted by Jethro for a very specific purpose. And in Exodus 18 verse 2 it says, Vayikach yitroch oten Moshe Et eshet Moshe acher it says, And Jethro, the father-in-law of Moses, took Zipporah, the wife of Moses, after she was sent away. Okay. So why does the Torah tell us that it was specifically Jethro? Well, as we see, Jethro's name, Yod, Taf, Resh, Vav, has a gematria or numerical value of 616. 616 is also equivalent to the phrase HaTorah, which means the Torah. So we see what is actually escorting, who or what is actually escorting the bride to her groom. It is the Torah. So without the Torah, we cannot be properly escorted. We cannot be properly gathered. We cannot be properly dressed. And so through the Torah, we gather and dress the bride as Yeshua commanded us in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. In the Great Commission there in Matthew 28, Yeshua says, Go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them all that I have taught you. Notice what he's saying. He's saying, go and gather the bride and teach them things in order to walk as the bride and to be clothed in the fine linen, white garments. So through the Torah, this is what we do. We gather and we dress the bride. And so an important concept when studying scripture, especially Torah, however we can do this with all of scripture, is we have to recognize a very important principle, which is symmetry and parallelism. Symmetry here in the earth from the left to the right, but also parallelism from the heavens to the earth. As Yeshua said in essence in the book of Matthew, he said, Father, your will be done on earth 
as it is in the heavens, meaning there has to be a parallelism in order for the heavens and the earth to properly connect, okay? And so as we see here, we have the bride, who is Zipporah, in the earth. But connecting the bride and the groom, we have Jethro, which is the same gematria as the Torah, which is the ladder that connects the heavens and the earth, or Mount Sinai. And then in the heavens, we have the groom, the Messiah. So notice the groom, the Messiah, is in the heavens. The bride, Zipporah, is in the earth. And in between them, connecting them, is Jethro, which is represented as the Torah, as we saw with the gematria. And so in order for there to be a proper connection, there must be a parallelism from the groom in the heavens to the bride in the earth through none other than the Torah. This can only take place if we walk as we were originally designed to in the garden. In the garden, in Genesis 1, 26 through 28, we see that God made man, but Selim Elohim, in the image of God. In Genesis 1, 27 specifically, it says, but Selim Elohim. This phrase, but Selim Elohim, which means in the image of God, has a gematria of 248. Now, this is very, very significant. This number is very, very important. Why? Because it brings us right back to understanding the Torah with Jethro connecting us to Messiah. Within the Torah, we have 613 mitzvot or 613 commandments. And these are break, broken down essentially into do's and don'ts. 365 of these 613 mitzvot are don'ts. Don't curse your father and mother. Don't put a stumbling block before the blind. Don't do this. Don't do that. However, there are 248 do's. Just like B'Tselem Elohim. In the image of God is equivalent to 248. There's 248 mitzvot in the Torah that are, you are to do this. You are to love your neighbor. You're to honor your father and mother. You're to keep the Shabbat. You're to give to the poor. You're to wear the tzitzit. Wear the tzitzit. Do, you're, to wear, you're to do these things, right? There's 248 do's because whenever we do these things, we walk B'Tselem Elohim. We walk in the very image of God, the very attributes of God. The word selim comes from the word sel. It means shadow. So imagine as you're walking, you see your shadow on the ground. Your shadow imitates everything that you're doing. The same thing with us in the earth as Hashem in the heavens is we're to imitate his attributes through his mitzvot. Now, another important connection with 248 is 248 is also the same gematria as Avraham, Abraham, our forefather. Okay, scripture not only tells us in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verse 3, that we are grafted into Abraham. It says all the families of the earth will be blessed in him, but it's also the word to be grafted into him. But Galatians 3, 7 tells us that all of us who are within the faith, we are, not, we are now B'nai Avraham. We are sons of Abraham. However, only if we truly walk in the image of God, which is equivalent to 248, just like Abraham, just like the 248 positive dues, the mitzvot, right? So this comes through following the Messiah according to the Torah. As we walk in these mitzvot, we not only walk in the image of God, but we also change our garments as we are commanded. At Shavuot, in the book of Exodus, chapter 19 and 20, we see God command something very specific. God says, you need to make sure that they cleanse their garments. What does this look like? Well, this is in Exodus chapter 19. What's interesting is the answer gives it to us very clearly in Revelation chapter 19. In Revelation chapter 19, verse 7 through 9, it says that the bride has made herself ready and it has been granted to her to be clothed in the fine white linen, which is the righteous acts of the saints. It is their mitzvot, it is them doing Torah, and it has been granted to them because of their mitzvot and because of the Torah, now they are being clothed in fine white linen garments. This is them changing their garments as God was commanding in Exodus chapter 19 in order for him to come down on top of Mount Sinai and for the bride to be connected through Sinai, which is the Torah which is Messiah himself. 
And so through this submission to the Messiah, we become a chariot for God and the earth. A chariot is one who connects the heavens and the earth. One who carries a carrier of God's glory, a carrier of God's will, of God's word, and of God's love and purity and righteousness here in the earth, connecting the groom to the bride. As we connect the heavens and the earth, we also are allowing Jethro, or as we saw, the Torah, to escort us. Just as Torah and Jethro escorted Zipporah, we are Zipporah. We are the bride needing to be reconnected with our groom. And so as we do this, we submit to, to the Spirit of the Lord and we allow the Torah to bring us to Moses, who is representing the Messiah. Rabbinic literature says that Messiah is called the last Moses. So just as Zipporah was brought to the first Moses, so will the bride through the Torah be brought to the last Moses, Yeshua the Messiah himself. Shalom and Chag Shavuot Sameach.